We're all jacked up. Uh, oh. I was about to say I was about to say welcome to the Beyond Nemesis podcast, and I saw I think we're gonna be good now. I'll, <laughs> the Halo smile because it's over image made an appearance on the <laughs> over on the stream. I love it. There we go. Now we're all straightened out. Uh all right. Welcome back to the Beyond Nemesis podcast, where Jedi is now in his 19th different location and also newly reddit famous i'm so reddit famous i mean i've been reddit famous before i've i've actually i mean for work i'm somewhat reddit famous i've had the social media like manager for not mm-hmm. manager but like director for tsm comment on like one of my apex posts and uh for context more recently uh someone screenshotted and had the audacity to blur my name out <laughs> because pablo schreier responded to one of my tweets yeah. <laughs> Pablo Schreier. I had to mute that conversation because people absolutely found it. What? I had to mute the tweet. Like oh. <laughs> I got blown out. I got blown out in that image. And uh what's interesting is that like it's the internet. No one's not gonna be able to find it. Yeah. Like, you just wasted the effort, to be honest. Right. But that's just me. That's just me being picky. You fa- they found me and I had to mute the tweet because it was just so <laughs> constant. Like it was both a, a constant flow of cringe and as well as like echo chamber stuff. Pylon. It sounds like it sounds like it's just a lot of people watch the Beyond Nemesis podcast and they yeah. kept saying exactly what we were saying. Yeah, we are, let's get them in chat. Let's bring them all in here. You should have like you should have been gone on their post like, hey guys, we'll be discussing this on the Beyond Nemesis podcast tonight. Should have invited Pablo himself. Yeah, dude, at the rate he's going, he probably would have come on. Uh, which, in fairness, I don't think he's a bad person. I think he's I extremely know. misguided <laughs> as far as his role goes. The top comment in that Reddit post is actually like spot on where they're just like, where they said he's going to exhaust himself trying mm-hmm. this hard to just cope well, with what his product is. I, I feel bad for him on one hand because a, again, like I look at his role in like orange is the new black. He's like, he's like a great actor, but he's never been like, to my knowledge like front and center i think and that's why i think he's defending so hard on this is because he's star this is his first like i'm starring in a major thing and this is huge like the numbers are through the roof like this series is going to define my career from here on out you know and so i can see like the 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 getting sucked into this you know like because he wants this to be amazing you know he obviously cares which is great which is good yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Just misplaced. He does. He do- <laughs> Why don't you tell us what you said? How How did this start? Why don't, don't you tell story time? How did? What did you say to start Pablo re- replying to you? You replied to so, him, and then he replied back. Is that how it happened? No. So uh, there was like a, a sacred Halo, a sacred icon Halo Twitter p- uh, fan page. I don't follow it, but like it just popped up on my TL. And somebody said, some, like, it said, oh, this is Pablo Schreier in a video cut where he explains, uh, this is the story that we want to tell, and uh, this is the chief that we're going to play. So we know that players aren't going to immediately, like, connect with him and understand that. But the point is of the show to, like, you know, get to know Chief, and you'll get to know this great character. It was I, I don't want to over-explain it, but it was more or less along the lines of that. To which I just was like, you know what, I'll, I'll casually respond. And I was like, yeah, I don't like the way Chief is represented in here. He's mm-hmm. uh, he's a completely different character. Uh, he was based off of uh, Clint Eastwood, his personality trait, mm-hmm. or at least the way that even Martin O'Donnell himself said it. He's like, we need a badass Clint Eastwood-like character. And I said, Clint Eastwood is uh, cinema. is pretty obvious. It's actions over words. Um and he replied to it, and, he, and it was a pretty nice reply up until the point where I was like, "Okay, I need to not maybe argue with a blue check mark on Twitter." <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, he he went on to say like he actually deleted his first tweet because he had to elaborate, which I'm, I guess I'm glad that he did because he would have absolutely got slammed even more than he is right now. But uh, he just replied to it saying like, "Yeah, the reason why you don't like it is because you're associating him with like the chief game that you know." Mm-hmm. Um, and then he goes on to like say in another tweet, and I can't stress it enough how like of a bad tweet that was actually, where he goes, and I understand <laughs> the cognitive dissonance of I the fans that. who can correlate the difference between the chief that they know and the chief that we're telling here. And that was such a bad tweet. And I was yes. like, that's why I'm like that's why I'm not gonna argue with him. I, yeah. I just kind of like surrendered at that point. I was like, Yeah, well, like you're wrong, but you know, I'll be I'll continue <laughs> to be critical. 
Um, and uh, you look good as a Spartan, which he actually does. I was actually honest. Like, the, every the, Spartan, all the great. Spartans' armor in the whole series looks awesome. That that was one of the highlights for me is the way the Spartans yeah. looked in their armor. Looked really like damn good. Mm -hmm. um, and even him. So that was just pretty much it, the gist of it. I mean, he replied back to that saying. He's like. Uh, hoping we could change your mind uh, coming soon, mm -hmm. and I respect your opinion. So he was actually a, a, a nice guy yeah. about it. And yeah. I'd imagine that he probably doesn't get that a lot. I'm not trying to boost myself up here and saying like, "Oh yeah, like right." He recognizes me. You're not looking but, for clout. Well, I wasn't looking for that, and you know, he he was actually pretty nice about it too, saying I respect your opinion. So yeah, I mean, he's he's listening of all people, and it sucks that they've got someone so passionate in this role who wants to succeed <laughs> and it's like misplaced in like the incorrect settings. Well, and then everything else is a cesspool of cringe in the comments after that. So I'm muted. My, my hope is because he is obviously listening and because there is a new showrunner who I'm sure has been listening to the feedback. Uh, I'm hoping that they're having conversations like, look guys, there's a lot of people who like are pretty upset about this. And like, obviously I'm not telling them to like change their, change what they want to do they're they are they're in charge at the end of the day but hopefully they can like look into why people are upset and understand it and then course correct like they don't need to alter their you know 10-year plan or, or whatever per se but I, there's lots of room for minutia and because i think that's what that's what a lot of it is minutia that that people are so upset about like i said it's characterization it's it's portrayal it's not like it's not like even though the massive plot points were also bad, uh, but there's just so much they can fix with, like with pretty small changes. And mm -hmm. like when I saw his tweet, that, that tweet, the cognitive dissonance thing, all I could think of was the, before the show even came out was the showrunners that quote that came out from the original showrunner saying like, we didn't even look at the games cause we didn't want to feel limited by the games. And I think it's obvious this entire production has had that problem from from the showrunner to well, Pablo Schreiber, Schreiber is like they truly view video games as a medium as as limiting as in like not telling mm -hmm. not telling like a like a, like a great story and it's like yeah. that is their problem because they're sitting there thinking like that they are taking the source material and instead of thinking okay we need to do this justice and we need to make sure we get it right because people love it they're thinking uh We've got this big name that that people love, and now we can just do our own thing with it. And while they can do their own thing with it, they're not looking at like what made it great at all. And it's obvious in the in the first whole, whole season, they did not understand what made this show mm -hmm. literally even an an ounce of it. Like, absolutely agree. Yeah, and you make a good point. It's just like they look at video games as a medium that's limiting, and it's just like that's what made that's that's what makes video games so much better is that they're not limiting. The yes. only limitation that, for as long as I know, has just been, like, the hardware, and that's about it. Yeah. And now we're at a point in time where it's just, like, it's no longer hardware, it's the the way it's distributed to you. That's why we mm -hmm. love Game Pass so much. And it sucks that it's on a platform of accessibility. And a lot of people get front, like that I get frustrated with are always saying things like, well, this is good for those who can't play video games or don't have time for video games. And it's just like, no one wants to argue with the accessibility of it. Everybody right. just wants to argue the fact that it's it's like the flea market version of what they're, what we've been trying to get y'all to play for so right. long. That's that's what hurts. It's like, to me, I'm, I, like I said, I've, I'm, I'm not a gatekeeper. Like, it's a dream of mine to, to share these things that I have loved for so long with people who have no interest in video games, you know, to be yeah. able to to be able to sit down with somebody, your uncle or your, you know, your a parent or whoever, a best friend who has no interest in video games, but to, mm -hmm. to, to all of a sudden, like, create like a new shared interest. Like, that's amazing. Like, nobody's saying this show shouldn't exist. It's awesome that there's a Halo show and that there's a, that Arcane exists and like all these things, you know, like, like you said, nobody's upset about that. What they're upset with is they're taking something that we love and is great and we know how great it is and how deep and how multi-layered and then they're just destroying it and <laughs> throwing it out and be like look guys look how great it is they're parading it in front of everybody and it's like no this is not what we wanted and you know i when i was reading your conversation with him there was another part of it that that cognitive dissonance part and like i was trying to think of an analogy to sum it up 
because he was saying that like basically i think what he was trying to communicate and you tell me if you think this is right or wrong he's saying like well you're not used to seeing master chief this way because you've only seen the games and now we're showing you something that you know you haven't seen of master chief before so we're just showing you something new almost inferring that it always existed like like this side of master yeah. chief always existed and now you're just seeing it which is why you don't understand it but no 100 yeah, this side of Master Chief never existed. There's been books. There's been how many games now? And I kept That's trying to think. To, Go ahead. That's what I wanted to argue with him, actually. Like, I just wanted to, like, you know, share that with him and be like, That's you found the words that I wanted to say. So thank you. And I'm not trying to take credit for that because you clearly said it better. But, like, in this case, it's just like if I was able to relay that to him, I really wish I could have. So I mm -hmm. would have gotten a more probably representative like response of what he actually feels rather besides what not what he feels but for him to really realize what it meant what he says mm -hmm. because I, I followed up in some of the comments like to some people who were just like i'm really glad he's showing the side of emotion and it's just like he's showed emotion guys it's, yes plenty of times plenty of times you are the emotion for him and mm -hmm. that's that doesn't just because you feel it doesn't mean he doesn't you're obviously feeling it because he is you are him and he mm -hmm. is you and like to people who want to say, well, it's limiting because he doesn't have character. And it's just like, bro, y'all haven't obviously read the books. Y'all haven't read any of the comics. Y'all haven't done any of the background lore stuff. And even in like the games, he's like slightly sarcastic. Like, oh, yeah. even in especially in Infinite, he was very sarcastic. Yeah. Super sarcastic. He was the most Clint Eastwood since Halo like two, honestly. Mm -hmm. Halo three, it was a little bit of a back step from that. Yeah. But you gotta finish the fight. But in like the rest of the Halos, it was kind of like, mm, what's going on here? And yeah. then in Halo no infinite like wow like that was they nailed that felt it. Like chief yeah so for this it's just like i wanted to relay that to him so much to say that like there, he's never existed in the way that you're saying it that's what makes him a different character yeah and for him to say like they are the same character i, I that was just like a, a strong <laughs> argument to just say it because you can i kept trying to think of an example and and this is this is an extreme one i know but it, it kind of makes sense so there's two scenarios, and I think he he's pointing to, like, imagine a work that you know and love, like, pick one. All, and for some reason, all I could think of was the Bible, which is a terrible example, but I'm going to use it. So, like, let's say, uh, you know, somebody knows the Bible, they love the Bible for what it is. And then now, in this day, modern day, somebody, doesn't matter who, writes an entirely new chapter of the Bible entirely new not like oh hey we found this from however many years ago it was this lost thing it's somebody writes it it's an entirely new and they stick it in there and then uh you know people are upset because like like well this doesn't belong in there well yeah it's because it doesn't belong in there like somebody just made it up and stuck it in there you can't say that like well you, you this this always existed and you just didn't know about it well no you just made it up and you just threw it in there and now you're telling me like choke it down you know like that that's that's always what do you mean like you know it, it's interesting you bring this up and you reference the bible of all things because it has to absolutely has been rewritten actually well, yeah, but I, I mean like today <laughs> modern day like like today modern day pharisees exist but i know exactly what you mean uh as far as like rewriting I couldn't think the of a entirety, fictional like i was trying to think of like i don't know star wars or lord of the rings or some some beloved franchise right Let's just call it the, the United States history books. Let's go with yeah. that option, right? Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Feds. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a lot of American history that people don't know about. But yeah, and it's not just rewritten, it's written over to the point where it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it's propaganda. I was actually you know, funny fun fun fact that I learned is I was listening to Joe Rogan with uh Burt Kreischer and uh I forgot who his other comedian stand up that they had, but um they looked up uh George Washington's teeth on there <laughs> the wooden and teeth just, thing wooden teeth. no it was it blows me away on two things one this is not the most crazy one but he actually had springs like these big ass like three inch size screen like springs to keep them shut <laughs> he, like to keep from like so he could talk and the second one and this is the one that blew me away was that he actually used his own slave's teeth for his dentures oh jesus that was that blew me away 
like I was like, what the heck? So it's just like in terms of like rewritten history, and I know that was a completely different cha- tangent. That well, blew my mind. There's, we, we can go down this tangent. I really don't care. <laughs> it's our podcast. I think about that stuff all the time, and and you know how people like people get torn apart, and it's usually presidents, but any celebrity for a different different gaffes they make or you know several presidents in the last 20 years have been torn apart for their ability uh public speaking ability you know torn apart multiple uh presidents or politicians governors whatever but i'm like you know if you if you rolled it back to you know let's say 1776 we we don't know what those people sounded like you know what i mean like we have no idea like but we but we hold those people because we just weren't there at the time you know, to hear them speak publicly, but we hold them as heroes in our mind, right? But if you were there at the time, you would have been like, "This dude's stuttering left and right. He's a moron." You know what I mean? But we couldn't even read. Yeah, Not even yeah, like, right, right. Even like, like, can't read, can't write. Like you know, everyone was just like four score and twenty years ago, and I could guarantee you, people were just like, "What the hell is he talking about?" Wash, wash. What, what is what is this? What does it say? I, yeah. You don't know either. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is that bearded dude up there? Like, that's the president, you know? Like, oh god, human evolution. Like that was a that was actually a really funny podcast. Actually, I don't. I, I know you're not a joke person, but like that podcast was actually really funny. I mean, I listen I to really, clips from time to time. Uh, th- that one with Bert Kreischer was actually really funny. Bert is actually. I love Two Bears in the Cave. Also, I love that podcast. Whenever I get the chance to listen to it, never too. heard of that one. Oh, dude, it is so funny. You've probably seen that clip, that one clip of him and uh, I keep forgetting his name, uh, the bald guy, but it's with Kool Aid, and um, they just bald start the podcast. Guy. I forgot what his name was. Forty like percent of the United States male population. <laughs> as far as uh, what happens is that uh, Bert is just like drinking this like huge like tub. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, potato? <laughs> this yeah, he has like this huge like igloo like water jug. And his uh, his guy is talking to him. He's like, "What are you drinking?" He's like, "Kool Aid." He goes, "What?" No way. He's like, "There's no way you're drinking Kool Aid." He's like, "Yeah, I drink it all the time." He's like, <laughs> "It's eight o'clock in the morning right now. You're drinking Kool Aid right now?" And he's like, "Yeah, let me pour you a cup." So he pours him like the red Kool Aid, and he gives it to him. He's drinking. He's like, "What the hell? You're actually..." And they just start. <laughs> you're drinking a gallon of Kool Aid at eight in the morning. <laughs> every every single day, yeah. And he's just like, it's so tasty. And he's like, people walk around and they see, oh, wow, look at that guy taking good care of himself, drinking out that water. And there's actually Kool-Aid in there. Like, <laughs> I'll send it to you. It's and really their 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 laugh is intoxicating. It's yeah. so funny. That's what got me into Two Bears in the Game. Yeah. I love that. I love that podcast. Burke Eichger is <laughs> hilarious. And so is his so is his wife. Absolutely hilarious. Anyways, back to our podcast. So so now that Halo the series season one is over. I did in, in cl- full transparency. I did not watch the final two episodes. I read like spoiler stuff online. I that's how I found out what happened. What did you? The final two episodes. What you what you make of it? Over now that uh, all is said and done. Where do you stand? I'm not gonna lie. I don't even remember what the second to last episode even happened, but I do remember the last episode because last episode was Didn't actually pretty. Bad. Master Chief fight Silver Team or something like that, and he made. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. it was it was a Spartan fight, that's for sure. Um, and they represented Spartans in the last episode a really like properly, honestly. Like, you know, Chief was without his without his suit for whatever reason. He's always out of his suit. It's I don't know why he's out of the suit all the time. But um, everybody else is always in their armor. All I know time, the is... other Spartans walk around with just the helmet off, but Master yeah. Chief walks around in gray sweatpants. <laughs> Chief is just like, God dang, dude, I've been in here for two hours. I'm uncomfortable. Um, no, but like the, the fight scenes were really good. I enjoyed them a lot. I didn't have any, like, it was still a poorly written episode. Like they've still made a lot of mistakes uh, in terms of just basic math and just the continuation of a couple of things and made things like really complicated. So, excuse me, um, the fight scenes, let's say that I'll just get this out of the way. The pros were the fight scenes. They were mm-hmm. really good. Um, the fight with the Spartans was really interesting because, you know, we don't exactly see what a Spartan fight always will look like because yeah. it's weird that it happens. So this was actually really fun, despite the fact Halo 5 kind of gave us like a like a cheap version of a Spartan mm-hmm. fight with Lock, with Lock and Chief. Um, this was really good. Like mm-hmm. Chief picked up like a battle rifle to like block. I forgot her name was Ka- not Kai. Um, the other, the other something like that. 
Riz, yeah, her. Uh, like, Riz just does, like, this crazy, like, 10-foot air jump and, like, flies probably, like, 15 feet to, like, punch Chief, and he picks up a battle rifle. She punches straight through it and hits him straight, like, in the abdomen and sends him flying. Like, that was pretty dope. And then there was also a scene where Kai uh, is uh, chasing after Halsey when her ship flies off, and she does, like, a Spartan sprint where she's, mm-hmm. like, taking off doing like a solid like 40 to 50 miles per hour sprint mm-hmm. um it was cg yeah uh, can't complain too much with it you can't make an actual person run that fast yeah. but it was insane there was like this really Trained weird like part. crazy for this scene dude yeah there was a, like a weird scene and this is like you know kai just being without her emotional thing where she's like picking up heavy stuff turns out that she actually did lift up a warthog uh with her own strength so i thought that was actually kind of cool, cool. Yeah, for cool behind the scenes stuff. Did and Reach then... actually get glassed? No. 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 Did Reach fall? No. 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 My prediction was false. And As a matter of fact, they didn't discover the Halo ring. Completely different. So, so basically, you... I said they didn't discover like the location of the Halo ring. They were about to discover right. the location of the Halo ring. They got halfway there. <laughs> so basically, this whole season, plot wise, went nowhere. Like quite literally. Yeah, like they introduced we, the characters and 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 universe and so on, but the plot didn't really go anywhere. It kind of didn't. I mean, honestly, there was a scene that pissed me off in particular where Chief and uh, uh, what's her name are like walking off to go get the uh, go get the um the sacred item and the keystone. There we go. The sacred keystone. item like, number one. Would, that's like that's, I can see them writing the script. Sacred item number one. <laughs> number two? Which one was it? Was it yeah. number one? They're all the same. Um, no, he was like taking her. Then the fight happens. And then uh, stuff happens. Kai gets to a point where she's like, uh, they've been lying to us. Y'all two need to think for each other. And then Chief is there, like beaten to a pulp. And uh, not Riz, but the, but, the, but, the, but the black guy with the black Spartan. What was his name? I don't know what his name is. Yeah, but he's actually, he's actually a character, and I hate that I don't know his name. You know he's what I saw bat- somebody say? And, and I would say it's so right. That, that guy, is it, like his characterization is actual Master Chief. Like, and, and I was like, you know what? That. He's right. Like, this yeah. guy's right. He's right. No, that guy was awesome. I love him. I do need to do a better job of remembering his name. It's not his fault that I don't remember his name. It's the show's fault. Um, but no, I, like, he's like, Chief is being held at gunpoint by him. He's about to pull the bullet on him, and Chief is just like, I know we've been uh, we've been kidnapped and stolen as children, but there's a bigger mission. And like, what pisses me off about that is that like that was the entire point of the indoctrination. Mm-hmm. So you don't get to a point where you have to say there's a bigger mission at hand because I can't care about being indoctrinated. It's just like, why would you like give us this entire season to finally get to? Don't worry about us being indoctrinated, despite yes. the fact we put everything at risk. That's what that's that's what's been bothering me about this plot line from the get go is that, you know, the whole thing about being a Spartan, in my mind, is that the Spartans know that that they are basically like the last line of humanity. And like no matter what has happened to them or or whatever, they're not going to freaking cry about it because they know, okay, our species is literally like our existence is being threatened and we are the last line of defense, essentially. But but no, we're gonna freaking cry that we were abducted as children. Like, come on, man! Like, you can you can do that plot line of, you know, the evils of the UNSC, w- without making it about Master Chief and and Kai, you know, crying. Yeah, I I I don't know. I I I, I totally think you could have done, you could have done that storyline through Soren's character. Because there, you, now you do have a character who has, you know, he's no longer a Spartan. He's left. He's done his own thing. And his motivations are he realized what the UNSC had done and blah, 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 blah. You could have established all of that through, through just his character mm-hmm. and not shoved it down our throats through the main supposedly hero character, uh, <laughs> Master Chief. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And what sucks, like, is that Soren was so much of a background character mm-hmm. than, like, just to put him with Quan the entire time. Like I did not care about Quan for sure. Nobody, I, does. Like, never, nobody cares. It, it still bothers me though. Like again, just like Magic thing went nowhere. 
you created more problems than actually solved anything, Chief. And then now all of a sudden you're like, we're all we got. Then yes. Everything is at risk. Yeah. And the reason why he says everything is at risk because he finally realizes my key like touched the keystone mm -hmm. and he's just like, oh, oh shit mode is activated. Time to turn, time to finally no bullshit it. Everybody, I've had my moment to, you know, dwell on being a kidnapped indoctrin. This is the bad part of storytelling on this. This is bad writing right here. This isn't even about like the false and the horrible way they've implemented like the universe yeah. into the story. This is just genuinely bad writing at this right. point and like unforgivable. You know, that's the thing that I think of. Like, I, this is what bothers me so much. Master Chief is, and, and even in this show, he's portrayed a, as a leader. He's always been a very stoic character. Uh, the Master Chief we know is very stoic. He has his ideals. He never breaks from them and, and so on. A, a leader type character in any story whatsoever, when they find information, they, they do not immediately react to it and cause tons of problems with that information like Master Chief did, like almost murder Dr. Halsey and cause all these problems. Um, you know, what, what a stoic leader, leader, badass type character would do is think these things through mm -hmm. and decide, should I, you know, clue the rest of my team in on this or should I take the secret to my grave for the greater good? And like you mm -hmm. said, they dragged this out. They made all these bad things happen because of Master Chief's actions. And then at the last minute, at the 11th hour, he's like, oh, shit, I had a mission. You know, and it was I guess it's yeah. important. The existence of humanity. Ugh, guess we got to go back to that, guys. No, it's so lame because they've also got a great lineup of like they got a great cast actually like yeah i i had like my reservations about like recasting uh like keys and even miranda you know and and i'm not saying that to say you know the the, the stereotypical things of what most people would say that for but it, it's different whenever you recast mm -hmm. and it's a it's interesting to see what the direction you'll go for i love them both most people actually, reacted not, very well to those two characters yeah they did great. I love Keys. I think this is a great representation of Keys. We understand, like, Keys in the books and in the novels and the game is a person who knows what the what he needs to do to get the job done, and he'll make those sacrifices. And he, even in the show, at the very final episode, where he comes up, he finally admits to telling Chief, yeah, I was there for the kidnappings. I had to be there. Like, we need y'all here. Mm -hmm. Like, he knows what he knows what the greater example is. And even right. Keys time in the books was just like i'm not sure if we should be doing this but at the same time like catherine's obviously somebody i love and respect enough to like trust her that this is what we need so he mm -hmm. did that for her and then like miranda like honestly i i had the same problem and i'm glad to see it finally coming out of the halo community the halo 3 miranda was god awful Boy. i thought halo 3 miranda was so bad like I agree. To war. and then like the obvious death that she had with johnson just flying in there like a like a ding dong <laughs> it sucks is like in the books and in the in the in like deeper like she she resented halsey like she really does not like her mother mm -hmm. and the representation in the show phenomenal i love yeah. it you know, like at the same time like the writing for her is just so dumb and so cringe like yeah can't wait to, uh whatever it is to dishonorably discharge my mother from here because i'm so petty against her yeah like oh god it I'm sucks not, so much i'm not sure that i understand the like like Frank is saying in chat, like I, I don't know why they're it seems like the writers have this like I can't think of a better term, so I'm just gonna say it hard on for making the humans the bad guys. Like at every chance they could and they totally almost forgot to make the covenant like like the bad guys or or, yeah. or seem like overpowering or showcase why hum humanity is under threat from the covenant. It's like Look who! Look how bad uh, Halsey is. Look how bad McKee is. Look how bad the Spartan program is. And even though all that stuff, with the exception of McKee, who's totally made up, um, like I, I, just, I don't know. It's I don't know where they were coming from with it. I don't. It's like they again. It's, it all comes back to they don't understand what makes Halo a good story, and apparently they don't understand what makes a good story. Period. Because <laughs> they're relying on all these tropes. They're injecting all these tr like sci-fi tropes of you know human bad what, what i want to throw and this just popped up in my head and it's gonna and i'm gonna say this as positively as i can and this is just a reflection on like 
how Hollywood casts and how Hollywood creates and writes specifically. But maybe they saw Halo's original, like if they, there had to have, because they clearly know some stuff. They understand Mm -hmm. that kids were kidnapped at a very young age, cloned, and then designed to be dead. If I'd imagine that there's a Hollywood scriptwriter who is just like, well, that's problematic as, as hell. We can't just like let people celebrate these heroes who are abducted kids and indoctrinated yeah. by the government. Maybe that's where this, they're like... coming from. Oh, one second. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, All right. maybe, maybe they saw that, that storytelling is problematic, which it really is, but that's, that's it's what fiction. makes it good. I, I mean, it's, it's, that's what makes it good. That just shows you that, like, even without addressing how horrible the government is or the the underground government works in in Halo, how like even horrible, horrible actions can still lead up to, you know, some potential safety net. Well, and for- that was always that was always that's always been Doctor Halsey's character, right? Halsey, it's it's known. It's out in the open. Halsey's done horrible things. She 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 goes way beyond. She defies orders. She does mm-hmm. things that are not even morally gray that are past the line. But she's always doing it because it's what she believes, whether she's right or not, what, mm-hmm. what needs to be done for the greater good to save humanity. And, and they, they've totally like thrown that out the window in this. And they apparently just setting her up as like a big bad. And it's just like yeah. there's no nuance it's- to it. Like did they not watch Game of Thrones and like fight and see that okay, television shows can do like morally gray characters very, very well and make, you know, characters that do terrible things somewhat likable and, you know, uh good characters very flawed and, and do evil things, you know, like did we miss that? I thought they did watch Game of Thrones. They had a they had a sex scene in Halo. Yeah, the, the final season, maybe. And see, all I could think of watching this show is they watched the trailer for Halo 5. And assumed that that was like the the overarching plot for like the entire franchise, the whole like Dude. hunt the truth and like all that. I'm like, they watched I the Halo the Five movie. trailer <laughs> where Master I'm Chief is like this movie. portrayed as this renegade, you know, and and they are like, that's it, like that's our story, you know, that's Halo. Mm-hmm. You know, I get that. It, it, what's interesting is that you say that a lot of like content creators like Actman, Hidden Xperia, um, they're like saying. It was Ackman actually said, I had an experience, but Ackman said, it's really telling how much of a bad product whenever you made Halo 5 look like a good game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> I mean, the multiplayer was good, but. Multiplayer was great. He he was a gray zone for that, but mo- yeah. like most everybody in the Halo community, once um, once a new Halo game comes out, it's awful and everything before it was amazing and perfect and I absolutely. S- I saw somebody point out today that Halo Reach was like, destroyed by the halo community when it came out and now like all these years later people are like oh my god reach is like classic you know <laughs> the yeah. narrative around it has totally changed um at least halo was consistent in creating new kinds of fans because i can only imagine that the people who are saying that it's a classic are also the same people who probably like grew up with halo reach the same way most people the first up, game like, that a lot of them played i mean too. i actually liked halo reach but that's okay i love them um, all I, I want to get your take on two things that I that I read. So um or have heard speculation about based on the finale. So in the finale, Master Chief like fully surrenders control of his body to Cortana, right? And like Yeah, he sort of dies. So so what what do you think is going to come of that? Like what It's gonna be some cringe anime story <laughs> driver where Chief is going to wake up not wake up, but it's literally the next season. It's either going to start with Halsey or it's going to start with Chief. And it's going to be Chief like in his what, what do we call it? Uh, in between heaven, in between hell. Purgatory? Yeah, he's going to be in like his purgatory mind or something like that, asleep while uh, Cortana is taking care of him because she's that badass or something like that. And, uh, and they're going to have to wake probably, him up, yeah, like wake up his wake consciousness. Up. Yep, this is... And they're going to waste, gonna like, eight episodes up. trying to wake up Master Chief's consciousness? Yep. Every every Halo you start out with is supposed to be with Chief. That's jumping the shark up. right there, by the way. That's totally... If if anybody watches this and does not say that, okay, uh, 
you know, AIs have always been part of Halo. They they do not run the Spartans. They do not physically possess the Spartans. That's just oh my god. Yeah, but I I agree, I agree with you on that point. And then the it, second it, thing, I hate that that happened though. What's that? It, it, I hate that it happened. That like he had oh, yeah. to die. For it to oh yeah. Over. So stupid. yeah, that was so stupid. Like what? What is that supposed to do? Right. I mean, like if it's setting you up for for next this, season. So they can call him Space Jesus next season because you know he sacrificed himself. Right. Oh God! Some people are. I see some speculation saying like, "Oh, this is how they finally like give Chief like turn Chief into Chief, just the quiet, stoic, and that's it." Because that might Cortana, be the best way to write yeah. themselves out of this disaster that they put themselves in. So like next season when they portray things totally differently, they can be like, "Oh well, you know, he's he's not the same. He's." rebooted he's resurrected when he wakes up it needs to be him doing it halo style like video game style he wakes up and like he's going into action that's That'd all he's yeah halo 2 is the only game that you don't wake up from but yeah that's what needs to happen he needs to wake up and he's gonna wake up and it, it needs to kick right into the action and it needs to just like make sense about like why he's back mm -hmm. uh i mean next season i imagine that they're probably going to jump into like a lot of forerunner territory because they're clearly going to be running into halo they have to be well, at, i, I want to ask you a question this is i read this this i thought was a terrible take but because i i've seen what these writers have done i was like they could honestly do this like they really could do this and i almost want them to do this just so you and i can talk about it on a podcast like two years from now when it happens I, I have read a speculation, and not like fanfic, this was like a honest-to-goodness media outlet, I can't remember which one, said that they think that the show is going to portray Halo as not a physical location, but like a spiritual plane, based on the way it's been presented, uh, which, which that tells you, again, how bad, and this is what pisses me off, is that people who are watching the show who don't really know, you know, the baseline of what Halo is, because the way they portrayed Halo in this season, people could look at it that way. Like we were talking about last week, where for some reason, M McKee and Chief are on this, like, heavenly-looking world, and, you know, they're, like, slowly touching each other, you know? And, and it does. It seems like it's... And I could totally see these writers, sadly, reading that, you know, the Covenant view this as, like, a spiritual, like, like you know, zenith. You know, it's very important to them. Like, it, it's not it's not a physical place. It's, like... It's in your mind. Like, it's on my, I was just like, this is so bad that it actually could be true. Like, this might I actually it, happen. Know, because it's, it's exactly that. It sounds like it's, that sounds exactly like what would happen, actually. Yeah. It scares <laughs> me so much. Case, if that's the case, then, like, I will probably assume at this point, 343 hates Halo and the Flood. And if they <laughs> want to skip that all together, if they skip the Flood, I'm going to be... I'm, I think that is like the actual final straw. There should have been a lot of final straws in the season, but it is an alternate universe. <laughs> That's true. You haven't had it yet. You haven't had it yet. I've been like, you know, I actually thought I had it. You know, I was being a little bit dramatic and I'm like, you know what? I'm done with this. This, this is trash. I hate it. And then like, it does bring me back. I love the freaking show. I love the Halo. I love this game, yeah. not the show. I love the, the game. I, love this. I can't just like not watch it and yeah. like not be constructive about it. Uh, and thankfully, no one's tried to like battle me or argue me with me on that. But I haven't had a final straw yet. You know, it hasn't broken the camel's back. If they absolutely do not want to introduce the flood, like that's it. Yeah. And if that does do come true, where it's just like, oh, it's like a spiritual place, then yeah, I'm done. Like that. It, I mean, in fairness, it could make the flood even more cool if they if they present Halo as this like almost like a perfect like perfect world. You know, and then all of a sudden, like, it just you, they flip that switch and the flutter introduced, and it's like pure horror. That could actually might work pretty well, but we'll see. Not as in a spiritual place. I just mean like presenting it as this, you know, heaven, almost heavenly world, and then all of a sudden, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. Last thing I'm gonna say before we move on, because we still got a whole nother we've, we've we've got through one topic, and this is the last time we'll probably discuss Halo the show for quite a while. Um, they went a whole season, and they only, why do we only have four Spartans? There's Silver Team and no other team. What's up with what's up with that? I kind of give it the pass, to be honest. Yeah, I will give it the pass because for so long, for 
years we've only ever had one spartan and that's true yeah yeah i'm okay with that past we knew that like in the background lore that you know if you read the books even during like the halo one days to you know, all the way through three you knew that there were more spartans it's just yeah you are the soul spartan this is his yeah. story this is the story being told here so i'm okay with that uh at the same time it would have been a little bit it cooler have for reference spartan. another spartan team somewhere else you know <laughs> like they could have just yeah. mentioned like oh hey gold team is off on uh I don't know. It was some platinum team. I don't know. Some other. I don't care. They could have. They could have cooked in some really cool reference too. Like from even if it was like, it could have been Locke. It could have been. They don't have to put them on the show. They could have just you know put anything. Um, but I'd they probably okay don't want to because it's Locke. alternate universe. Yeah, I'd be okay if they introduced Locke. Honestly, I mean Locke I is the actual still a actor too. Yeah. What's his name? Uh. Cohen, Cohen, Mike Cohen is his no name, idea. I think. Um, no, I, I like I liked Locke. I like the opportunity Locke brought. I thought I think Nightfall was bad. Did you ever watch Nightfall? I did, and I recall like zero of it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It was very much zero. Uh, like he, I like Locke as an idea, but he hasn't been put into practice just yet properly. So I hope if they bring in Locke, I wouldn't be too mad about it. But at this point, they need to bring in ODSTs. For season yeah. two, we need Nathan Fillion. He needs rep- <laughs> he needs to be Buck. Like he's quite literally Buck. If they don't bring him in as Buck in season two, that's gonna be pretty lame. Uh as on top of how lame this already is. Fans would love that for sure. Yeah, that would that would be that a would really win, good that would win them some points. Yeah, that'd be good fan service. And then who else would they be able to bring on? Sorry. I mean Fucking, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I don't usually use that word in the podcast, but fucking Sarge. Yeah. The fact that he's not in this is a travesty. Yeah. No, one hundred percent agree. And that was exactly what I was about to say. It needs to be Sarge. Oh God. Hidden Experience said it the best. Like they've got the best marketing person in the game to do all of like their sales marketing for like ODST. You remember Halo Three ODST mm-hmm. marketing where they had Sergeant Johnson talking about it? Mm-hmm. Like, God, it was so perfect and like. It was funny. Hidden Xperia said, if there's one person who should have clapped some cheeks, it was supposed to be this guy. And it was Sarge and Johnson. It wasn't Hidden Xperia. That was Act Man. The thing about Sarge, too, and it, 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 I swear to God, I swear to God, they do not need to add nuance to that character. He's supposed to be that tropey, like, cheerleader, you know, like, oorah type character. They don't mm-hmm. need to give him some weird storyline where it's explaining his motivations and his traumas. Just make Sarge a cool yeah. supporting character to add a few laughs and to get you hyped up. That's it. That's it. Man, that's what makes Halo so great. And I hate the fact that, like, Pablo is so invested in, like, trying to, like, get this chief to tell his side of the story we've never seen before and it's just like dude we know it we, we we'll, we'll get there like you gave us a pretty lame face reveal we didn't earn it and like at the same time everybody else's story was so much cooler and what they did around chief like <laughs> that's what was cool like we knew cortana was leading us majority of the way and then like at the same time we've got like all these other badass things happening with these other characters like keys like keys was a badass mm-hmm. and then like whenever he dies who do we get next? We got Sarge leading majority of it. And yeah. then we have a third. Got a so, little bit of Sarge, Sarge died multiple times in every level. But I mean, he still kept plugging along. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It'd be cool, though. I mean, like, Sarge does have a background. Are you aware of it? So, some of it, at least. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 one of my favorite things about Sarge was always the, the story of how he survived Halo CE. Yeah. And like that they actually added lore for that and then like every time they would ask him about it and like anything thereafter he would always just say that's classified <laughs> i love that it was like he had some oh, rare yeah. disease right i can't remember what it was but no uh i forgot he so what how he left was he actually ended up escaping uh very like kind of like short like oh, a couple of days before the halo effect actually took effect took, i think there or was some, the, there was up, wasn't effect. there some weird thing though too that where he was he has some really weird like rare disease which makes him immune to maybe flood infection is that it yeah so okay. he had because it was just like of all the people that did get infected and he was there like how did he escape and like how did he not get infected and it's not that he can't get infected. It was he, they looked past him because of his disease was okay. specifically more harder. Like the flood is that intelligent. They're mm-hmm. able to hyper analyze their hosts before they actually infect them. 
So he had the most hardest one. And they're, the flood's main priority is to infect and then take priority to then build later. They're that smart. So uh, Sarge managed to escape. He left and he ended up getting like on a falcon and just like, yeah, adios. Um, but with, uh, with Sarge, his background, uh, and I believe this is told in, Har- in First Contact, you learn that Sergeant Johnson was actually one of the first candidates to be a sergeant. He's on the cover, I think. Yep, he's on the cover. He's on the cover. You learn about uh, his love, his romance, his love, his, and stuff like that. Um, and like, yeah, Sarge, Sarge is an interesting character, but like, it's so great how they bring him into the games. And it's just mm-hmm. like, he's got so much history. And yet here he is just being that cheerleader for us yeah. in the good, best way possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, he's so great. Palmer mad <laughs> yeah palmer's a nothing she has no she's one of those characters where obviously they tried to create something and there was just nothing there there's just not a foot to stand on and she's she's fine as like a background character but she has no personality yeah. or story or anything none and it sucks that they threw away that cast from um from her because that was the same voice actress for Ma- uh, shepherd for mass effect i think in the most recent book that i read the most recent halo book too like it's even referenced i don't remember whose point of view it's from oh god is it that's one of the other spartans i think um but but they reference that they really don't like her like they they don't like people don't like palmer it's kind of funny all right so we'll move on past halo uh now that we've talked about it for an hour this is probably the last time we'll talk about halo the show for quite a while so we had we had to do it, had to do it. Well, um, it's finally over, y'all. Y'all can breathe. Y'all don't have to watch Halo or hear us complain about it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you might, we'll complain. We'll find other stuff to complain about. Um, all right, I'm gonna move into the whole EA thing. So it oh, it, yeah. it got out this week that EA wants to be acquired or merge, and they've already talked with uh Amazon, Amazon Apple. Apple Disney, and then they had a merger that failed with NBC Universal. So, what do you make of all that? Surprised? Not surprised? Surprised at like who they try to be acquired or want to be acquired by and merge with? I'm not, not at surprised all. that they want to be that they want to sell. Yeah. Not but you talking about the way. NBC Universal thing, or like just the fact that it's like Apple and Disney and yeah. Amazon? Yeah. All of those, yeah. Like, it makes sense for them that they would want to be acquired by, like, their closest and most successful partner, which is Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that that doesn't really add up to me. It doesn't make sense. And maybe that's because of, you know, the recent Activision thing that they're like, you know what, that's, that's going to take too long. And maybe these documents were based off of the acquisition timing. Uh, but it didn't make sense. I was like, Apple, I mean, like, Apple's actually got a lot of opportunity to enter the gaming space mm-hmm. that isn't just a gaming console. I still think they have opportunity, despite how much of an unpopular opinion that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but like Amazon, I don't think Amazon needs to be in the gaming business anymore. And they honestly, like, I really hope that YouTube gaming does get there. But that's just made my bias. Yeah. If they sold to Amazon, it would still make sense. Mm-hmm. But again, like NBC Universal, Universal, like, NBC one's pretty confusing. That's confusing as hell. Like, what's what's the? Well, I think I think. This is what Phil Spencer has been saying for a while, right? It's like, so what I, what I see is it's a it's stuff that you and I have talked about. So like there are very few companies that can actually acquire a company like Activision Blizzard, $70 billion or EA. EA is going to be in the same ballpark. Like Sony, can't, not even Sony, you know, this, the, one of the largest people in the space can afford to acquire a company that large. Yeah. And this is, if you look at what, Phil Spencer has been saying for the past few years is Microsoft's been making all these acquisitions. Like it looks to us like Microsoft is playing is on the offensive and they're like, you know, grabbing all these companies and they're like building this huge war chest. But he's actually said a few times that like their biggest competition is actually the tech giants, like like Facebook and Amazon and and Google and, and so on. So like from their perspective, I think they're playing defense. Like, like we have to buy Activision Blizzard because if we don't, and somebody one of these other companies is and then you know they're they're not gaming companies per se and um uh, yeah i mean i would be 
I'm very interested to hear what these what these tech giants want to do. Um, because if it's, hey, we're just going to buy one of these companies to get like a piece of the gaming pie and all the revenue that comes from it and let them operate independently, then OK. But I, I'm just very curious what their plans would tr would truly be, because. <sighs> there's so many different directions that they could take, right? Like people have been saying Apple wants to make a console for a long time. Uh, they've got Apple Arcade. Uh, Amazon is in the gaming space, but they've basically been focusing only on PC with like New World and Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. um, what what would their plans be? You know, like if if Disney got them, what the, what what would they do with with EA? Oh. You know, I mean with with I mean Disney in honestly, like if I think about it, in, NBC Universal make a little bit of sense. Uh, I'll elaborate with NBC really quick because. NBC houses a lot of sports network showing. Mm -hmm. They televise, I think, the largest sports entertainment network uh, next to like ESPN. Whenever you know it turn, it comes to the general public, I think ESPN viewers are going to be like those diehard players. Those are those are the same people like subscribing for PlayStation Plus and like Xbox Game Pass. Mm -hmm. Like that's who those people are. And as far as in, uh, NBC Universal, like if it came down to it, they're streaming and they're and they're. Uh, their infrastructure is constantly growing into an all cloud business. Mm -hmm. Like they've got, Peacock, they've got uh, Paramount plus, I believe no, not CBC. Sorry about that. Uh, but they've got like a lot of, a lot of different networks. So it makes yeah. sense that, you know, Hey, here's a product. Here's a bunch of product with gaming that they want to be able to utilize. And maybe Madden goes to an all streaming service, or mm -hmm. maybe in this case, NBC universal wants to front the money to actually continue the game development for that. And maybe integrate, some deeper cloud me mechanics in there. Like imagine you're, it's game day, you know, and you know you wanted to see some updates uh, to your post game and your Madden 2026 copy or something like that. Uh, throwing it out there, you know, that's dart on the wall right there. So that yeah. kind of makes the sense with the sports stuff. What they do with like the other IP, like Dead Space, Mass Effect, Dragon Age, like they Apex. could turn those. They could they could they could televise all of that. All of those have great universes. And and Apex Lord Netflix Hell. series is already supposedly pretty deep in the into production. That'll be interesting. All about the metaverse, it. right? That, that, this yeah. could be all all, all that's what could all these tech companies could be thinking is continuing to expand their footprint into the you know into mm -hmm. gaming and and then utilizing um, you know EA to put their properties into the gaming space through whether it be full fledged games or collabs or, or whatever. Um, I mean, NBC can also just sell those IP as well. So like, Oh yeah. If, if they don't see value in those games, they can license say, hey, them out. You know, one of these, who wants it? Take, take mass yeah. spec off. Yeah. Which honestly, like Bioware, Bioware has another chance with me. I'll see what they can do. Dragon <laughs> age four is looking pretty spicy right now. Mass effect. I it had Liara in it. Did That's all see, I care about. I'm, I'm going to spoil this for a lot of people, but uh, whatever. Did you see what the the, uh, the Mass Effect website accidentally spoiled? Do not. You would not spoil anything for me. Okay. Well, they sp they basically spoiled the entirety of the next Mass Effect game. So, uh, yeah, it happened. Nope, not done I, it. I mean, you, you don't know how it's going to end, I guess, but... <laughs> Not happening. I need to. I need to absorb it in whenever they we have our summer game show announcement for the game. Okay. Okay. Um, they, is it going to be there? I think it will. I hope I think so. It will. I think it's if still not, pretty I, far off. I'm thinking like two, three years at best. I mean, they, they did the same thing with Dragon Age Four. You know, they yeah. kind of they just sizzle reeled it for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's actually interesting. This is going to be a really slow year for like game announcements, and we're really like piggybacking off. Of I don't know. I think so. I, I think there's a lot. The rumor is that like all 30, however many studios uh, that Xbox owns are going to be present uh, during there's the no Xbox way. showcase. I don't think so. I don't know. They've got a lot of third party games, too, that they have coming as exclusives that uh, they're going to reveal, too. No, that makes sense. I mean, Xbox has always been, you know, on top of the third party reveals. They pride themselves off of that more than well, I mean, like party. games they're publishing. Like, um, who's the people that make Hitman? Oh, what the heck's that? Oh, uh, I, uh, something IO. Yeah, they're they're working on a game for Xbox. Uh, there's, there's a that, lot of them. There's a lot of them. What? Isn't aren't they making that Mandalorian game? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I was supposed to making uh, an RPG, like a dragon focused RPG, mm -hmm. which I totally believe because um, what was it? What was that? Scalebound or whatever fell through. So you know, Phil Spencer's like, we need another freaking dragon game. Like this is bull. Bring me another I, dragon game. I want that to come back. That was that was the niche game exclusive xbox like desperately needs to yeah. I think, reach a wider audience yeah. and that's the game to do it it was so edgy but like so invoking at the same time with the gameplay that they had for it yeah. so yeah. um i mean like back to like the, the original topic though i mean like i think uh disney makes sense too for obvious reasons it's disney like we've got what everything. other what other superpower in the world doesn't disney yeah. own you know yeah <laughs> um yeah, that, that's and see that this is what's funny. Like people, people are you know they look at like the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard and they're like, oh my god, Monopoly. Then you look at stuff like what Disney's got, and it's like they've got a free. You know how much they own? Like dear Disney God, and Hulu, literally everything Disney, Marvel, like Jesus Christ, yeah. man. They yeah. own Alien. Yeah, there's like ten companies that own the entire the entire multimedia space at this point pretty much yep did you is... oh, i didn't put scary. this i didn't put this on the agenda but did you see the controversial uh response tweet from the xbox game pass account today at, at kotaku no well, you didn't see it fun. oh no. man this is let me look at it let me look at so it kotaku put out an article today that said players are burnt out from xbox game pass and starting to cancel their subscriptions uh, that was literally the article and uh which great article guys do you write an article every time somebody cancels netflix or hulu or hbo <laughs> but any anyways um xbox game pass the official twitter account replied uh tell us you only play triple a without telling us you only play triple a <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's a good tweet that's a good response although i feel like they should not have responded at the same time probably not like but I mean, it was a very devolver type thing to do yeah uh kotaku also put out like another one earlier this week that the ftc is cracking down on like uh paid influencers for their products for gaming products and at first okay. it didn't seem real i i usually don't read everything from kotaku i yeah. think kotaku is like the worst site imaginable it's like insufferably bad they go from uh, but literally... one pole to the next. Like they're they're that company that like they were much better when Jason Schreier was there. Basically, I could say that. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree they with at that. least had some exclusive intel at that point. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, but like they put that out, and then it was interesting because after that was posted, two they're not even Xbox influencers; they're just gaming journalists. Uh, Danny Perez or Pena and uh gene gene perks gene parks mm -hmm. i forgot what his name is the guy with the, the washington post yeah like they said they both said like almost at the same exact time i'm no longer subscribing to my xbox game pass there's no yeah, enough yeah. value i noticed that so i was like that's interesting maybe that maybe that kotaku post was true uh i didn't read it i really should have but at the same time it just seemed like some dystopian like xbox I find, war yeah <laughs> article that i didn't want to be yeah. a part of and then like naturally the communities you know being trolly and stuff like that and everyone's pretty, pushing out i just feel it's pretty it's a pretty dopey thing to write about like you could you could write about okay last you know last quarter any service was at 25 million subscribers this quarter it's at 20 million that's news that's like wow they, they dropped you know 15 20 mm -hmm. of their subscriber base that was the big netflix news a couple weeks ago that and it shocked the stock market and you know that's news not that's like it. oh some people on twitter are saying that they're canceling their xbox game pass it's like so what man like i canceled my shutter subscription two days after i after i oh, am i gonna write an article about it you know <laughs> like, i don't and like, they, they choose the like most unique people to be like saying those things like I, I swear, like the hive mind console war stuff is just accurate, dude. Like as soon as like Red Redfall and Starfield are canceled, you know the delay not canceled, delay not canceled. 
uh the the x like the non-believer xbox side the weird people were like hi no games blah 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 and then literally like the next few days later xbox game pass comes out with like their new games and like i i remember skate 3 being on there and they're saying wow look at this dead game pass service nobody wants this anymore like it's actual like waste of money never killing the gaming industry killing the gaming industry and i'm just like jesus christ if there's anybody more consistent about like product it's the people who hate xbox yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> they're more on brand and honestly most of these console and gaming brands that try yeah. to put themselves out there on twitter like holy <laughs> crap <laughs> It's just so for true. just for 300 likes Blood, from strangers. Blood every- in the water kind of thing. Like, oh, here, yeah. come, here they all come. So funny. It's the same people who, who, you know, scream Monopoly, 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 Monopoly. And then, then in the next breath, they're like, oh, my God, they have no games. And it's like, well, they simultaneously have a Monopoly and have no games. That's quite a take. I, there's like a... Like there's these two memes going out. They're actually really good memes this time. Where uh you know, I talk about how bad their memes are. They actually came out with good ones. Um <laughs> the PlayStation weirdos are saying, like, uh, here's an Xbox game like case and it's titled nothing. And I was like, all right, that's actually pretty funny. And it's literally nothing on the cover. I was like, all right, yeah. that's a pretty good one. And the Xbox weirdos have a like a FIFA kind of cover for PlayStation 5 that says that it's called the game title is called Moving the Goalpost. <laughs> By the way, notice, I I think that the EA shedding the FIFA license that happened, that news happened officially like a couple weeks ago. I totally think that's that's prepping themselves for an acquisition because that's going to drop their valuation by like billions of dollars. So totally think that was not a coincidence. My team is like not even listening to that. Like they're they're dead set that like it'll still be successful. And I'm like, I think. Yeah, I'm like, I'm pretty sure PES is going to be the new FIFA, bro. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure that EA will be able to, because they've got like whatever they're calling it, EA Football Championship or whatever the hell they're going to call yeah. it. But I, I'm not sure that that's going to strike gold, but we'll see what happens, I guess. I don't, yeah. They can call it the game formerly known as FIFA, like Pull a Prince. And... Interesting uh, is Big Mem. Yes. So let's talk about your favorite org, Under Thieves. Yeah, man. Getting into Making game development. Game. What do you think? Wow. I think it's going to be stupid. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, <laughs> like, I'm happy for them, but like, there's just some things you don't have to do. And I'm interested, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's dumb, but I'm interested to see what can happen with this. You think it's going to be a shooter? I, yeah, I think it's 100% yeah. going to be a shooter. If it ends up being a mobile game, that'll be like the best eight ever. <laughs> Side scrolling um, platformer. Uh one hundred thieves like a uh, doodle jump or flappy bird. <laughs> thieves bird. I don't think they'd make that yeah. big of an announcement over something like that. Yeah, I don't think so either. But like, you know, I love I love what they do over there. I really do. I think they've got a great badass brand. They've got a really interesting esports initiative going on right now i nade puts it best that they're in the business to win right now and making money in esports is hard Mm -hmm. it really is and when you're putting that much money on the line you will do whatever you can you can to make as many changes as you can but it's so unorthodox to the esports roster so their esports initiative is interesting i keep watching i keep wanting to stay updated um and obviously their branding and their clothing line is just wonderful you know i'm a I'm a subscriber. Like, literally, I just got an email today. They're releasing their spring or their summer 2022 foundations line. And I'm, like, super stoked to actually buy some stuff from that. But a game feels like you're stretching a little bit too far. I don't know what the game is to say, mm-hmm. like, you shouldn't be doing this. Mm-hmm. I don't want to tell them that they shouldn't be doing anything they don't want to do. But at the same time, I'm curious and ca- curious and cautious, first yeah. and foremost. Like, I- what is this going to be? And is it going to be, like uh youtube thumbnail creator game or something like that because <laughs> Jesus, or do they rail it in with that mr beast font logo in the front of their videos all the time i've been waiting for this and i didn't necessarily think it was going to be 100 thieves but i was pretty sure that some org was was going to first i thought that it probably wouldn't be like they developed it i thought it would be like a let's say phase presents whatever game like 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 they were consulted they were involved Mm -hmm. because that happens now like streamers and pros are consulted and stuff but very very closely you know phase presents call of uh 
whatever call of duty competitor you know so, so, things, yeah. yeah yeah i i i thought that would be the first thing to happen but i did expect orgs to get into development at some point i i think I it's it super risky nine. what i thought it would have been like cloud nine or it could have been anybody ESM, to be honest well those two make the most sense because they actually have a entire like framework for software development yeah like I mean, tsm i mean they, they were an org first before they were got bought out by like, a crypto company like a crypto like a uh, business but you know they have the framework for that and cloud nine has like act, is like the first org and if not the only org to actually have uh data engineering roles for esports mm -hmm. like that's insane like yeah. cloud nine does some incredible work in this space they design a lot of stuff for valorant and then they sell it back to the valorant team like yeah. that's an actual story so it's just like stuff like that. I expect them to do it, but a hundred thieves is like, hmm. Well, they hired like they hired the former Telltale CEO, which is interesting. It's a guy who knows how to run a game development company, not make you shooters. Um, it, it does in some way seem like a natural evolution because all these people become who they are because of their love for a certain game, usually. And in a hundred thieves, it, a lot of them are Call of Duty. You know, whether it's Eight shot, whether it's um oh god, who's the guy I'm thinking of? Actually I'm thinking of somebody from Optic at the moment. I was thinking of Scump. But um Oh, you're uh I know who you're talking about. I'm brain farting right now. This is my third Topo Chico of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but but so it seems like I ever wondered if there would be the day where, you know, uh an org or a group of pros yeah, sure. or whoever uh who come up on a certain game make the game that surpasses that game or that franchise, you know, that, that is a compelling story. With that said, it's a super risky move because game development is a extremely hard as we constantly are reminded B extremely expensive as we are constantly reminded. So like, let's say this does open new investment opportunities for hundred thieves, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say this game totally flops. Let's say it has a budget of a hundred million dollars. I mean, that's, I mean, you just, you don't know. It's a huge risk. It's it, mm -hmm. it, it that could it it could kill the it could kill the, the org essentially if if it was a, a dead flop. I don't think it'll be a dead flop. I think I don't think it will either. But I'm just saying, it could. Yeah, it definitely could if they if they were to like literally nickel and dime the hell out of everybody for this game, one hundred percent. And it'll be telling, very telling, if even if their own players who are signed to the org aren't even playing that game. That would be pretty embarrassing. Yeah. That's like if you find out Doc doesn't play his own game too, which speaking of Doc's game development is is on a good track record right now. Progressing. Everyone everyone's seeing it pull through right now. He's delivering everything that he they're, said he would. They're they're supposedly gonna have a playable build out this summer. Which it's this gonna summer. be extremely basic. I, I and I want people to prepare themselves for that. It's gonna be like stick figures basically for character models most likely. But um yeah, it's going to be really interesting. It, it's because I, I don't think this is going to be the last. I think somebody else will try. I, you know, 100 Thieves, I think somebody else will, will follow suit. Because like yeah. I said, I mean, you can get tons of investment, hire a ton of people. Uh, it's a potential new revenue stream. It's uh, you're about to find world. Out, you're about to find out developers themselves are just not easy people to work with, too. And that's not saying the developer's fault or anything like that, but it's a it's a huge task. Yeah. Get, developing a game compared yeah. to just building out a routine content schedule for your streamers, mm -hmm. significantly different. And they're going to have, I, obviously, Nade Shot's not going to be on like the floor, like, you know, going over everybody's shoulders. Yeah. And, hey, what are you, what are you making? That's not going to be Nade Shot's. That's definitely going to be. Honestly, at this point, such an entirely different company that like 100 Thieves is just putting the branding out. If yeah. anything, I don't see anything. Somebody was looking to sell a product, an IP, and 100 Thieves saw it and they said, you know what, we'll do that. We'll fund it. And yeah. we'll house it under our own. That's how the conversation started. Yeah. Um, that came as an opportunity more than anything it's else. It's going to be really from. interesting, too, to see. Uh, probably some of these people who haven't been involved in game development, not saying that I have, I have very little knowledge of game, like firsthand game development as like behind the scenes, other than what I read on the internet. But like, mm -hmm. you know, some of these like pros or streamers, you know, when they're, when they're giving feedback on this game, which to be clear, this already happens to an extent, right? Like 
plenty of companies bring in streamers and pros to play a game and tell them what they think. But as part of being part of the active development process and and like saying like, well, just just make it like this, you know, make it like that. And the developers are going to be like, well, no, it, it doesn't doesn't work that way. And what you're asking for is literally impossible or, you know, th things like that. And it's funny when you think about it. Like so many of these like games, like think of some games like iconic gunplay and you wonder like why more games don't just like straight up copy it. You know, it's like mm -hmm. probably because it's really freaking hard. And that's why that game hasn't changed its gunplay in 20 years. You know, like Call of Duty's gunplay has basically been the same for 20 years. Like, and not everybody uses Call of Duty's gunplay because it's actually not super easy to just be like, oh, just just copy it. A more like a triple A studio compared to just somebody with the idea for it. Like it always. Exactly. It's always unbelievable. And like, I, it's interesting because like, People will always have like a say in like how video games should be made, but at the same time, like question like stuff like that. Like, why don't you just do what they're doing? And it's just yeah, like, right. It's not their product. <laughs> right. Right. And it's not, it's, it's not just something that you can just, oh, okay. Like that's, oh, okay. No problem. Like somebody actually has to code that. Somebody has to, you know, make the gun, like design that gun, like, like make the model like that, animate it. Like little they things. Code it. Right. Little things like make such a difference. Like, I mean, even from game to game, like how much of your gun do you see on the screen? That makes yeah. a big difference, you know. Like, Video games should not exist. Honestly, they are actual magical works of <laughs> man and god. Like, I, they should not exist. They're and it's insane that people make them. And so, like, you've got my utmost respect. Yes. The only thing you don't have my respect is when you make a shitty TV show and a <laughs> shitty. <laughs> And then tell me that I should like it anyways. Uh, Maz says, watch it be like NBA 2K type story mode where it's Nate Shots. Life where you start working out in fast food and try to make it in an, as an esports. <laughs> It'd be a really hard game. One in one billion people can finish the game. Like a roguelike game. So it was interesting to see people say talk about their humble beginnings. And it's just like, it wasn't that humble. <laughs> I think Tim the Tap Man probably had has probably one of the more humble beginnings because he actually had like a normal day to day job, like a, a very small paying one. And he just told his wife, I want to be a streamer. And then she's like, okay. I think Tim, she ended up getting a really good job and he ended up being a trophy husband. Tim, <laughs> trophy husband. Tim lives like an hour from me, not not far. Well, he did. I was about to say, yeah, he did. I was like, from, the, really from the Syracuse area, area. Right. not far from me. He still goes to a lot of the Syracuse uh, athletic events. He's a big Syracuse sports fan. Um, Did you see the HyperX collab? With who? Him? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I I need him to stop being a part of like these commercials though, where they like they like write him into like his own <laughs> commercial. It's so corny and cringy. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But that's that's Tim's brand, corny and cringy. It works. And failing every single time in Fall Guys for clout. <laughs> Dying by fall damage in Fortnite. He's basically a fail. He's like a walking fail. It's just the way he is. Uh, are you a Dead by Daylight person? No. Did you see the Dead by Daylight dating sim that they announced? Yes. <laughs> are you now a Dead by Daylight person? No. <laughs> no. I figured you were going to be all over something like this. I don't know why. I, I like dating sims, but like I've probably only played like three total and actually never completed them. So. Is that the Colonel Sanders one? Did you play that one? No, I didn't play the Colonel Sanders oh, one. I, it, was, man. it was Hateful Boyfriend, which I think is like the pigeon dating simulator. Um, <laughs> and there's this other one where it's like these three crazy, like psychotic if not one of them psychotic girls or something like that. It's actually a very graphic one, and I never finished it because like, I, I play them because they're funny on the internet, and I was like, oh, I should play that. I should waste my time doing something like that. They also announced a Resident Evil and Attack on Titan collaboration. Well, they already had a Resident Evil collab, but they have a second one. But lots of Dead by Daylight news. Uh, all you Dead by Daylight fans. But now that I'm talking to a blank couch... I I'm went... I went okay. to go get another Purple Chico. Okay. Uh, speaking of Dead by Daylight, I played the Evil Dead, the game, uh, yesterday for the first time. Is it good? I 
I cannot say enough good things about it. I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Like, okay, A, the graphics and presentation are top-notch all the way through. I mean, it's made by Saber, and Saber's done some good stuff in the past. Yeah, but, like um, Halo Master Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's just, like, the gameplay, like, it's it's very tense and, like, like, like fast pace and well balanced. It's really trending on like uh not trending, but it's been like a top performer on Twitch, yeah. I think. Not top ten, but it's definitely up there. It's up sold the half a million copies already, and it's a forty dollar uh game. And and yeah. you know, to my surprise, there's absolutely zero microtransactions in it. Right. Right now at least you buy it and you get a game. You know, like you don't see that much these days. It's a very evil dead thing to do. And I fell down an, an evil dead rabbit hole after i played it and i was like listening to all these youtube videos and remembering things that i didn't think i remembered or didn't know like they're making a new evil dead movie and yeah. uh i started watching ash versus the evil dead last night because now i'm just like i don't know i'm falling into this evil dead thing you're, again. you're telling me you're a product of consumerism whenever whenever they actually have a product that makes you invest in the rest yeah. of the franchise okay cool it worked. it worked yeah <laughs> actually worked we're not done talking about halo tv show guys yeah <laughs> i'm still bitter and salty we gotta get a quip in there every single week every single episode that's our new goal uh, at least reference it in some way every single episode i can't tell what you're staring at i am staring at the office and michael scott is ice skating with i don't know who but somebody he, somebody just threw a gun at him Oh, I've never watched a single episode of that show. Is it super, this guy who threw the gun at it was like super greasy and like in like a a latex black suit. It's kind of creepy. I now Michael Scott is killing somebody. Okay, Smite collab with Slipknot seems weird. Uh, High res High res has this weird uh, history of collaborating with things like ten years after they should have. Like, uh, they just did a Rambo collaboration in Paladins. The last Rambo movie came out, like, at least five years ago. At least. They also have an Avatar The Last Airbender collab. And what else? They've got, like, a bunch of weird stuff. I mean, no collab is really bad, because you're going to capture a fandom no matter what. But yeah. th the timing of their collabs is usually quite strange. The PUBG Evangelion one happened last week, too. That was kind of weird. I, st I still... Uh, I remember PUBG did like a Suicide Squad collab, like the first Suicide Squad yeah. movie, like oh, two geez. years after it came out. They had like Jared Leto's Joker skin in the game. I was like, why now? <laughs> Makes no sense whatsoever. But they did. It surprises it. me how well that game still does on Steam. Well, I, I heard after it went free to play, it's really been doing quite well again. Yeah. It, the gun, that's one of those games where the gunplay is just unmatched. It's super unique and never gets old. Oh God, Johnny, Ma, China uh, number one, <laughs> Taiwan number one. You see this Marvel Snap game that got announced? Yeah, the the creator of Hearthstone is making yeah. it. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm actually, I'm interested. Me too. Because I'm interested for probably the wrong reasons. I'm interested to see like what kind of artwork they can do for these cards. Do you see they're doing variations too? Yeah, which is really yeah, awesome. Hard. I love that. It also yeah. gives them an infinite amount of microtransactions because you might get the card, but then you want to get like all the variants and they can like literally reissue. I actually like that though, because one of the things that really turned me off about Hearthstone after a while was like you would get a you know, you would get cards and then they would become totally useless in the next expansion or you kind of had to like start over kind of type thing. Whereas oh, this like and stuff. Yeah. Whereas this and I'm sure they'll do new cards and stuff. But they could tone that down because they can release new content just by releasing new variants of the of the cards. So it gives you something to strive to get without just being like, oh, I, I need to buy all these packs to get the new cards. You know what I mean? I think Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Master Duelist is doing that right now, actually, which solid game also. Like, you don't have to spend any money on that game mm -hmm. to get your card. But I think whenever they made that game, they realized they've got such a large database of cards yeah. that to tell people you need to pay to get these cards is like extremely, extremely it hard. It turns you away too from the game, I think. You're like, ah, yeah, I'm not doing this. 
I still I and this is gonna be a cringe like opinion here, um, but like NFTs definitely should be able to work in the TCG space. Totally. That makes the most sense. I agree. Yeah, totally agree. Like the digital space for cards, and this has been my this has been my problem with like being able to play them. Is that Hearthstone? I was like, all right, these cool. Like to your point, like hey, I have a set of cards, and now the meta is completely useless. So the value of the cards that I just spent into this, into creating the card, into trying to uh, unlock the card through a box, is gone. Mm-hmm. So like, what do we do with these cards that like now have no value to them? And then mm-hmm. when can I reuse them for anything besides just public globby games and stuff like that? Yeah. Would love to see like the NFT space take care of that. Yeah. To be able to really show value for it because there is something special, despite the fact that it is a resell hell uh, for actual TCG like IRL cards. Hmm. So like you know, shiny Charizard, uh, fat gay Pikachu. <laughs> I have from no the idea what that is, but okay. <laughs> it's it's just a fun it's just a fun meme name for it. Um, like those cards do a lot of value. Mm-hmm. Like I was at a card shop and there was a thousand year dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh. It was literally listed for like twelve hundred dollars. I was mm-hmm. like, what the hell? No one's gonna use that card. Right. But it was it was valuable because right. of the age up. So TCG and TCG and NFTs definitely should work out. I know um the SHIB it fixes creator. the dupe problem too, right? Because you could like trade right. with other players or, or just resell yeah. and then buy more packs kind of well, thing. Trading, trading still exists. It does exist in yeah. some of these card games. So, yeah. I mean, that works too. But again, the value of it just goes away still. So, right. we'll see. But at the same time, uh, the creator of the Shibi Inu to, Shibu Inu to Katoken uh, is uh, working on an NFT trading card game. Mm. But the problem is, is that it's probably going to be like a crypto artwork thing no one gives crap about that yeah. they can't actually <laughs> i mean it's always kind of surprised me that um marvel hasn't gone all in on games the way they have film because if you roll things back 20 years you know marvel was just a comic franchise essentially and they obviously have gone all in on film they've now gone all in on television and there has been some sporadic great marvel games you know sony's spider-man game uh, a lot of us are looking forward to insomniac's wolverine Mm-hmm. Um, but but they haven't like they've got the seal of quality for movies like like down and they do not deviate from it and yeah. it, it, it kind of surprises me that they've never made it an initiative to we are going to make marvel games as great as as marvel movies like every marvel game that comes out needs to be like you know at this level check this out i'm sending it to you right now you tell me what your thoughts are on it can I really look at it on screen because it'll ruin the uh you sent it to me on Discord? Yeah. I have like eight thousand messages. I saw that. I, I read this earlier today. What are your um, thoughts on it? My thoughts are share it, share it with what what did I send you? So so Jade I just sent me the article uh that came out today that Back in 2014, I think it was, was the year that this conversation happened. Marvel approached both Sony and Microsoft about making Marvel games, essentially. And one of the fruits of that conversation was the game that became Insomniac's Spider-Man, which was obviously insanely well-received, insanely sold insanely well. And uh, now Insomniac's making Wolverine, another Marvel franchise. But Microsoft said no. That's that was the they said, no, we want to focus on our own IP. And I guess one thing we don't know is the financials involved. Like, like what what did Sony make money wise off of the the Spider-Man game? We know that I would argue that they probably moved a hell of a lot of hardware thanks to the Spider-Man game. But we we don't know what they were actually, you know, paid to develop the software, so to speak. Um. Hindsight's 2020 obviously seems like a mistake on Microsoft's part. Significant. Um, I don't know. I don't know who the receptionist was that got that email before it went all the way up to Don Matrick. Don. Don. It went straight to Don, I'm sure. And Don's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Don was like, I'm out. I'm going to Zynga. That's what yeah. probably happened. He missed yeah. the email. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had already accepted the new job. He just stopped reading his emails. He's like, no big deal. Such a miss. Such a huge miss. You know, I think people like always want Xbox to acquire like WB games and stuff like that. So that way they can get all still the might DC. Happen. Huh? Still might happen. It still might. It's still for know? sale. I've heard. I, 
I wouldn't be opposed to Microsoft doing that. I think that makes a lot of sense, especially now that we're going to see Sony potentially increase the size of its Marvel games. Mm-hmm. Like they've clearly done a fantastic job with it. And DC is like literally doing so unbelievably bad. They need to find a new outfit. <laughs> they need like, to win CW down at this point. Like they've canceled almost every single like DC DC EU show they have. Um, and now like they're only writing on like none of their DC expanded universe movies, like the new Batman movie, the mm-hmm. suicide squad, um, like stuff like that. So it's just like, they really need an outlet. So if, if it goes to Microsoft, that'd be pretty cool. But at the same time, I don't believe that like those characters should be exclusive to just one console or yeah. one. I don't case. think, I don't think they would be, I, I, especially with the way both Microsoft and Sony are heading, uh, this past 12 months or so. I mean, even Sony came out just like last week and said that we're very much heading in a more multi-platform direction. Mm-hmm. So I, I could totally see, you know, Microsoft or whoever buying Warner Brothers. And I mean, you wouldn't take Injustice, for example, uh, and make it console exclusive. You just wouldn't. You, you yeah. buy you buy IPs like that to make sure that they reach the widest audience yeah. possible so you can get that revenue. You know what I mean? If that was the case, I mean, like, if they if Microsoft did buy WB games, they would acquire the Mortal Kombat IP. Right. They so. can make Mortal Kombat exclusive. I, I just I picked Injustice. Maybe that was a bad example. But you yeah. know, the, the next Justice League game or or whatever. You know what I mean? You you I don't know. It, but it it's depends on the game, I guess. Depends on the game. But I mean the Hulk still missing out on its chance to be a mascot. The Hulk? <laughs> For, yeah. Yeah, green, but green. if you could have picked a dream, you know, Microsoft developer developing DC franchise, what what would you have picked? Like pair up what, who who with what? That's a good question, man. I mean, literally the only things that pop up in my head right now are what can Bethesda do right now. But looking ahead, like it's just like what could blizzard potentially do yeah it's true oh god so, that'd be incredible like what if blizzard like had somebody from like the overwatch team make like a really cool like marvel shooter like a marvel hero yeah like a uh, game that, yeah. that'd be cool actually i think that would make a lot of sense actually but about, it's got to be good and yeah. have constant one on like overwatch one and overwatch blizzard 2. does polish their games to insane levels which would which would Ooh, match really well cool. with marvel Imagine like a Diablo esque Marvel game. And they've tried that, but it's always never been like successful. They've mm-hmm. they've done a few few like isometric X Men games that are kind of more arcade like. But yeah, that would work. Oh wait, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Those were like on the Xbox 360 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvel Alliance, right? Yeah, I think so. So I mean, like those weren't necessarily like Diablo though. I played those games. They're actually really good. Uh, they're they're definitely just like linear storytelling games, mm-hmm. just with a top down view. Uh, I'm th- I'm saying like imagine like you get uh like you get to choose whichever Marvel hero character you want and you could play that same linear like Diablo like storytelling experience but the mm-hmm. dungeons are always different they're always randomized yeah. um you could do that but like just with a character you want to select and mm-hmm. maybe it could be limited maybe it could be like an X Men game and you get to choose between a select pool of X Men characters in it and it's just like an X Men Diablo game I think that makes the most amount of sense actually how about maybe- in Professor Xavier's brain. That's why every single dungeon like randomizes. How about uh, id software or machine games and the Punisher? Ooh, I, I, just, I just thought you about sell that. Ideas, Mayor. That's what you do. I did what? You sell ideas. That's what you do. Because <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, I had an, I had another one. Uh, it this 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 team doesn't exist anymore. But back in the day, they did. Rares conquer bad fur day team with Deadpool. That was that, that was full satire too. I can see that. No, I can see I still it. think I can't believe they haven't made a new conquer. With, with memes these days, you could have like it would be unlimited content. Like you literally Microsoft, the like like largest liberal tech company in the world to they make made a conquer live and reloaded. Game. They made conquer live and reloaded. It was different though. Those were different times. Yeah, it's true. Who knows? It, it, it makes sense. You know what though. really pisses me off 
though, is that that Microsoft since since then they've constantly like like dread conquer out in front of everybody and made people like excited and then it's never what people want like they added conquer to like some stupid game i can't remember what it was um but it was some like bogus game nobody cared about and then they put him in like young conquer in like the hollow lens demo or something like that yeah. which like pissed everybody off and then they what was that weird game that they made that was probably actually ahead of its time that was almost like Forge or Minecraft where you could like build your own world? And they added like a whole bunch of stuff from Conquer to it. And like they played a trailer for it and everybody thought it was a new Conquer game. And then it was like, oh, uh, Conquer levels for Skybox or whatever the hell it was called. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's that was that was like in 2015 or something. You, yeah, it was. I know what you're talking about. They I always forgot. like you see conquer and you're like oh my god they're actually gonna do it and then they're like nope it's just nope. some stupid dlc for a game you don't care <laughs> about oh man i really hope this summer is we're like next month we're literally like three weeks away man e three so season's excited. almost here yeah it's almost here do you think and sony's gonna just, like, just surprise us with their showcase the first week of june i've heard everything from it's not coming till september to it is coming in june I, I Sony has been so unpredictable these last two years, and I don't mean this in a good way. They they have especially on the marketing and messaging side, and I I really don't like the direction that Jim Ryan has taken the company as a CEO because when it was it Sean Layden was that his predecessor? Sean Layden, yeah. Sean Go. Sean Come Layden in. had yes. like swagger to him, like yeah. like when he was on stage, like even though like I'm not like a PlayStation guy. Like, you could tell this is a guy who loves the PlayStation brand. He believes in the PlayStation brand. And when he spoke, the fans, like, like heard him. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he had the pulse of the players. Like he, yep. he, he had it. Since Jim Ryan has taken over, like, the, the number of announcements that they've that they've had have just been slim to none. Um, he got in a debacle last week by sending out a weird abortion email, like, with with, like, a story about his cat. Um, about his dog it was literally don't get an abortion get a dog <laughs> instead yeah, of having it, it was such, such a bizarre altogether. thing to do when you are the ceo of a company in 2022 oh, God. That, was, um, that was actually kind of funny man I, I i i had my own personal like week during the entirety of that all and that came out and i was like all right you know what it's peaked well it, it's just such an odd thing to do like like most ceos like in that position would probably just do nothing right just just like don't say anything they you let know? their age take care of it that is all they do I, 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 he just i don't know we're getting off on a tangent i guess but i i really don't know with sony and i i understand that they have a last of us remake that's probably coming out this year uh that's basically finished um their twisted metal uh reboot they could probably announce that at this point it's probably safe to announce that um Naughty Dog's it's working on another game. game. What? Your potential Silent Hill game as well. If they're involved with it. Um, yeah. We'll see. Uh, also, uh, Death Stranding 2. That's that pretty much... Thanks to Norman Reedus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Norman. That I don't trust any... I don't trust celebrities anymore with that kind of stuff. Like, ever since the Tom Holland thing, like, oops, I leaked the name. Oops. Silly me. Well... Guess you're going to watch my movie now because I did it. Like... What? I, I saw an explanation of the, that that made a lot of sense. And... You know, they said that basically in the movie industry, like there's no secrets because it's super easy for all that stuff to get out. You know what I mean? Like everything's done out in the open. Like if you're going to film a movie, everybody knows about it. It's not a secret. You know what I mean? Whereas mm -hmm. in the gaming industry, things are secret because you could do it in a box where nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And so they were saying like, well, it's normal for actors to be like, oh, yeah, like, we're, you know, we're working on a script for this or that. It's not like greenlit yet. Like, you know, to just like casually be like, oh, yeah, like we've got ideas for the next one. And I'll do this there. Kojima, though, Kojima, though, is the king of secrets and like misdirection and stuff. Like he really is as far as his game announcements. So he had to be super pissed that, that it got leaked. Yeah. Yeah. No, true. The guy announced Metal Gear Solid 5 under a different name from a different studio at the Game Awards. Remember that? No. Yeah. The Metal Gear Solid 5, the first trailer for Metal Gear Solid 5 was 
they it was like shown under a different name like the game had a different name and they called it like it was like some other studio it wasn't kojima studio it's like nobody had ever heard of any of this and then like it turned out that oh that was actually like a year later they're like oh yeah that was my Gear solid five. Oh, he does no. crazy crap like that all the time okay I legit had no idea about that. Okay. This is going back like, quite a few years now. You know what's making it's speaking of Metal Gear, you know what's making its way back around the entire internet is Metal Gear Rising. Like, I saw the are, headline about this. Thanks like, to Metal memes. Gear Rising. Yeah, it's the memes, but like people are like legit like taking back like Metal Gear Rising, one of the best Metal Gear games of all time. <laughs> and I'm just like, man, That's a I thought hot that, was take. Be, that game was supposed to be a connect game, dude. It did have this weird, yeah, like you could like spin your sword and like chop things at whatever angle you wanted to, yeah. but you had to do it with a controller. Oh yeah, they're, they're doing it. That they didn't confirm that was a controller, but yeah. it like so it, looked, it was like a fever dream. Like whenever they announced that, I was like, "Holy shit!" Gaming just took an entire leap. I absolutely drank the Kool Aid on that. I was like, "I heard that's a good game." So, I hear, dude, Hidden Xperia just did an entire like Metal Gear Rising, one of the best games ever made. Yeah. Like video i'm like all right i'll have to find an hour of my time to watch this video platinum games right there it. they developed it platinum games did develop it yeah they un unleashed basically um all right so we're getting towards the end here i'm gonna skip over some of this other stuff we're changing up our recommendation segment we didn't talk about this offline really so i'll just it could be anything now it could be a game it could be a movie it could be a TV show. It could be an album. It could be something that's not out yet. It could be something that is out. It could be something you're playing right now. You can recommend anything, Jedi. Recommend anything mm -hmm. to the good people of an M fam. I Mayor, spoiled mine. You gotta tell me. Have you ever had Texas Roadhouse? <laughs> Maybe once. Maybe once? Maybe I need once. to like confirm. No, you gotta give me a look. I'm gonna work with here. I I I believe I was there once, and I can't recall when or who. Well, I'm pretty sure everyone at least has been to it. But I'm only saying this because I'm actually going, and I am beyond excited because it's been like a few months since I've been to a roadhouse. Did you and recommend Texas, Texas Road Roadhouse? Yeah, I'm recommending Texas Roadhouse absolutely. So as a Texan, like I, I I'm very surprised by this. I kind of was expecting people from texas to be like that's not real you know texan food or something like it's got the word texas in it that's all we care about yeah i don't know so like i mean like okay so i know we get like a couple people from texas in the stream i don't know if there's anybody outside of the stream not from texas but as far as texas roadhouse it's a wonderful beautiful place where you could get some of like the best steaks made at least for the quality at what you purchase them at. Like your best steak you will ever get. <laughs> at least for five ninety nine. Be... <laughs> Not for five ninety nine. You can, you can I, get a pretty know. big steak. Like I said, I have barely ever been there. Uh but like the best part is always gonna be the bread rolls. Did you did you do you at least have any of the rolls? I, I literally can't recall anything. Okay, so like the rolls are always freshly baked. You will never get them. Let me like, tell you always. something about me that the people that, that know me know. Everywhere I go to eat i will order the most boring and bland basic thing on the menu we could be at a six thousand dollar steakhouse and i will order like Ooh, like a, like a, like a burger or like chicken fingers or something like i just i don't care about food people who like have been out with me know this but you haven't been out with me so i had to share that with you I know where we're going whenever we meet up. Finally, we're going to Kings, and we're just going to get you some chicky strips. I want to go to Bucky's. Why would you go to Bucky's when you're just going to go there and buy a bag of Doritos? Don't I don't know. I don't eat Doritos. <laughs> not sponsored by Doritos. I ain't telling you. I'm not eating that garbage. Uh, you eat Takis? Wait, what? You eat Takis? The hell's Takis? Uh, they're oh, awful. yeah, yeah. No, I've never. I don't eat like anything salty or sugary, period. Pretty much. Uh, these are more spicy. Yeah. Don't eat them. You don't in a bag, them. I don't eat them. I'm not surprised anymore, Mayor. Um, I mean, okay, let me let me go away, because we've spiraled out of control here from, like, my <laughs> recommendation. Texas Roadhouse is his recommendation. Um, I mean, like, as far as recommendations go, 
Uh, I will. Oh, I probably shouldn't do that. That'd be that'd be really bad uh, if that was mentioned on Nemesis and it's branding and product stuff. So I can't say that one because I respect it. But um, what is something I would recommend? I'd recommend this Topo Chico right now. This thing slaps. There you go. You got two. I don't. You got two recommendations. I know you're, I know you're not. I know you just said like we spoke about it before uh, we got on the show. I was drinking it, and you're like you're not a drinker. But I mean, like if anybody likes sparkling waters or seltzers or anything like that. This is actually really good. It's not like a White Claw where it's just sometimes often gross than anything. This has got like a strawberry guava taste to it, and it is so good. It's so easy to drink. Uh, it doesn't have that seltzer like bubbly to it. It's bubbly, don't get me wrong, but it's not like most seltzers where it's just like overly bubbly and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, 4.7% uh, val- uh, alcohol volume, so... Pretty dope, actually. I love these. I, my friend recommended to, them to me when we went to go drink the other day, and I have not stopped thinking about it. I'm in Dallas for the next day, so I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm stuck in here. I don't have my PC to play, and I don't have my Xbox, and I really don't want to do cloud streaming. Play Xbox Mobile so, or uh, Apex Mobile. I have an iPhone. It's on. It's on iOS. It's yeah. on iOS too. Yeah, I got it right here. Yep. No way. Swear to God. Is it good? Do you recommend it? Uh, it, I, I've only played two matches in fairness, but it runs really, really well. Um, you know, I have a mobile controller. I'd rather play it with that than touch controls. I, I've heard pretty good things. I, I can't say too much more yet. We have somebody on our team who is like a huge advocate for mobile games right now. He really wants to tap into the Apex Legends market. Mm-hmm. And we could throw money at it. We could throw marketing at it, but we've never played the game yet. So we're just <laughs> trying to figure out what we can do. So we all have iPhones on the team. So we're just going to give, I guess we could give it a shot now. There you go. Uh, right. I'm, I'm going to recommend two things. One, I already spoiled Evil Dead the game. Seriously fun. Uh, it's, it's scary. It's fun. It's action packed. Stylish. Great graphics. Would be definitely fun with friends. Uh, so I highly recommend Evil Dead the game. Also recommend V Rising. V Rising is a vampire themed oh. survival game that just came out. And I had never really gotten into survival games, like ever. And uh I'm just, I'm getting into this one and I'm liking the gameplay loop and the vampire thing is a cool cool theme it's and it's good. really making me look forward to the Blizzard survival game, uh ironically. Okay. The um man, my friend my friend my co-worker he recommended that we go into v rising and i was like what is it i have no idea what it is never heard of it he's just like survival mmo uh pvp and i was like we can run tournaments off of it he's like yep and he's a lost he huh i think he could yeah you can you can we we, we've already talked about it he's already told me he played it for like 13 hours straight Mm -hmm. um very and he's and he was just like yeah we should definitely do this and i was like i haven't played it and also like it kind of made me mad. I'm just like, do we just throw any kind of like mythological creature, mythological creature into like any game and just roll with it because it, we can, we can't come up with anything else. Like you've got a vampire, like it's called vampire, vampire rising. And it's just, everything's so magical. Dude, I'm just like, is it even a vampire at this point? The the year, it's like the year of the vampire for, for gaming. Cause we've had, uh, what was it? Vampire survivors. And then we had blood, blood hunt. And now we have V rising. There's a Vampire the Masquerade, like, side, like, offshoot that just came out. Um, for whatever Red reason, Falls Vampire Red, Red Falls next year. Yeah, was supposed to come out this year. For whatever reason, Maybe. somebody a few years ago when all these games started development was like, yeah, let's do a Vampire game. Everybody. Just the 20 developers in the entire world that work on every single game, but just make up hundreds and hundreds of different aliases, just texting each other in the group <laughs> chat. We should probably hold back on the vampire games. We've, yeah. we've got some stuff we're pretty close with. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the next thing? They, they're moving on from zombies is what it is. You're like, guys, we've made 6,000 zombie games. What are we going to do next? Um, the vampires. The vampires. Man, I really hope that they can get like some really cool like underworld collaborations going on in Blood Hunt. That would be super cool. Like, I think their get, cosmetics like, need a lot of work. I love their cosmetics, actually. Oh. I, I, I hate the... Um, the fact that you can like buy like hair cosmetics mm-hmm. in the store, like all hair should be available within the game. But I like their cosmetics. All I think hair. they look really good. Unleash I do hate the hair. I do hate that they uh, that they archetype lock some of their cosmetics. That's my mm. biggest question. 
they've got some pretty cool the stuff. Same issue. Yeah, and they'll just like throw it like on a specific character, and I'm like, I don't care about it anymore. Yeah, yeah, that is disappointing. It, it drives me nuts in Halo Infinite too. You got to unlock every color visor for every core you have, and they like, go, oh my god, yeah. don't like that. Um, Halo since it, it got updated. You haven't you played it since it got updated? That you said. Yeah, I haven't played it since it did the update. I since, did. Uh, I played the first week of season two, and I haven't played it since. But tomorrow starts the uh, fracture event, so I probably will be booting it up this week. I'll, I'll probably boot it up this uh, that week too as well because I do like that. I don't want to miss out on it as well because yeah. I did miss out on the last, hmm. literally the last freaking item in Fracture Ten Round. <laughs> I like this one. I, I like the armor core for this season. So, um, right. game stuff coming out very soon. Uh, Roller Champions, Super People supposedly coming back very soon. Stranger Things 4 comes out this Friday. The Boys Season 3 in like two weeks. And Top Gun Maverick comes out uh, this Friday. And I just got this feeling that Jade Eye is uh, secretly a mega Top Gun fan. I'm excited for Top Gun. See? <laughs> know it. Super People. I remember you talked about Super People on one of the podcasts, and I got really interested in it. I looked at it, and I was like, okay, here's something that is that that has a lot of potential. I don't think it's going to come back. Don't think so? That's my personal prediction. It's not a bad game. I just don't think it's really got, like, a... Sad to say. I don't mean to be negative. I don't think it has a bright future. Love yeah. to be wrong. All right. Oh, and Buzz Lightyear comes out next month too. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I actually been watching. I'm, I'm I'm interested. Chris Evans, the Gray Man. I'm really looking forward to that. Chris Evans plays the bad guy. Ryan Gosling versus Chris Evans. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. I think that's in July. Man, I want Sonic Three already. <laughs> you gonna have to wait a while. Wait, did you see that they used the? Uh... Reject Sonic and the Chip and Dale. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh boy. Wow. At least they embraced that's like, it. That's kind of funny. It is. At least they embraced it. Yeah. Of all the places to put that too. I know. That's so random. <laughs> that's a, it. Probably figured they can't really do any damage. You know what I mean? Like it's fine. Like risk free move. That feels like a Sonic PR and like social team move right there, more yeah. than an actual Sonic move. Yeah, big time. I highly doubt Sega was like, yeah, let's do this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I think that's that's to, that's today, huh? We'll yeah. Really fast. Yeah. We'll be back next week. And we'll, we'll literally, by next week, well, no, I guess you'll still be in May, technically. But that much closer to E3 season. So get ready. Literally, I think, what, an actual week away from E3 season? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let me see here. Open up the calendar. They're all different yeah. dates now, so. They are. That's right. It used to be 14th all the time, right? Well, they were, it was all My, in the same week, at least. It would be June 14th. Microsoft was always the day before. They were always Monday. Yeah. They, they said they would intentionally do it, too, because... And it sounded like they were just trying to, like, make their power play, because it sounded like they weren't confident with what they were able to always show off. Mm -hmm. it sounded like yeah well we we won't be able to actually like show off everything that we want to so might as well do it early ea would do that too they would do that stupid ea play thing like the i think it was the weekend before e3 and i was always just like nobody cares ea yeah like, they, they, ne they never had a great ea play event ever there was not a single yeah. good good one FIFA. Man, dude, I remember they gave us like a long Madden show and everybody was just like, for the love of God, we get it. It's football. It's the same football game. New loss, new roster, $60 every year. Everybody knows the best E3 press conference is still the Konami 2010 conference. If you if you haven't watched that, that's another recommendation. That was the biggest disaster of any conference I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Like you will, there is literally like nonstop laugh out loud moments throughout the whole thing. Got to check it out. Uh, all right, guys. That's it for this week. I am Mayor Reynolds. I'm Jedi. I'm we'll going see to you. <laughs>
<laughs> we will see you. I'm going to my kitchen. Uh, we will <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Later.